Hey guys, what's going on? It is Eric. I am back today. As promised, I have another Facebook Live. So, what I'm going to cover today is something that honestly I don't talk about that often. Um, it's not the easiest thing for me to talk about, but I think there's something to be learned. So, yep, I'm just going to go for it. So the other day, um, in one of my Facebook groups, I just received a message that said something along the lines of, you know what, like, you don't know what it's like to not be in shape, or you don't know what it's like to struggle with fat loss. Uh, based on your pictures, your genetics are insane, or you're on gear. Well, first off, it's completely flattering for somebody to say, you're on gear, which is you know slang for, dude, you're juiced up, which, quite honestly, this simply isn't the case. But I'm not, so it's like, I'm not juiced. But, you know, it's, uh, like most people, the reason I got into fitness and got into training and, and building my body is because, you know, deep down I was not satisfied with who I was. Like, that was my pain point. That was what drove me. You know, really behind anybody taking massive action in anything is a pain that has to be greater than the pain of staying the same. So, for me, you know, growing up, you know, I was a kid, I had, you know, an excellent family, very active, you know, I couldn't ask for anything better. Um, but, you know, I love sports, I love being active, and, you know, everything was great on the outside. But deep down, really, I wasn't happy with who I was. You know, it, it, things kind of manifested more, you know, as all my friends started growing, we entered high school, and you know, cause I was always searching for something else, you know. I wanted to be big and strong. All my heroes were strong. Arnold was strong. He had giant biceps. My dad was strong. My dad was very active. So, you know, naturally, like, I see my dad doing push-ups. I see Arnold with big arms. I'm going to start doing push-ups before school. I'm going to start doing all these different things, and of course, I'm going to get <clears throat> jacked. But, you know, that's not always the case. So, you know, I kept at it, and time went by. I kept, you know, trying all these different things in the gym, and, and things just didn't seem to work. And, you know, things got worse when I was, you know, kind of entering high school, right? For all of us, it's kind of a tumultuous time. A lot of things are changing. Uh, but all of a sudden, after meeting a pretty good athlete, all my classmates started growing. They became like the guys like Arnold, so to speak, or the guys that, you know, were big and jacked. They talked to girls. Um, they kicked ass in sports. Pretty much all the things that a dude who's 14 wants. And, you know, as time went by, all of a sudden, it's like, when the hell am I going to grow? When am I going to catch up to everybody else? All of a sudden, you know, half my, you know, half my classmates seemed like they had beards, and here I was as a freshman in high school trying to play sports. I was five foot two, one hundred and three pounds. Five two, one hundred three. Like that is fucking tiny. And I'm baby faced still the way it is, but like just imagine it. You know, half this age is crazy. Anyway. So, you know, all my classmates, all my friends, you know, they were starting to chase girls, they were getting stronger, building muscle, doing all the things that I wish I could do, and, it, like, it just wouldn't happen. You know, naturally, it just wouldn't happen. So, you know, soon things started to change. Um, you know, some of my friends, all of a sudden, I wasn't that cool to hang out with anymore because I looked like a fucking fourth grader, and everybody else, um, you know, was mature and, and, and doing better in sports and, and just making new friends. And, you know, there was, like, little old Eric in the corner, and nobody wants to hang out with a guy who looks like he's 12 years old or, or 10 years old when you're in high school. So really at the time when everybody else was, was growing strong, uh, independent, cool, finding out who they were, I more or less felt like I was kind of small, weak, pathetic, and feeble. You know, deep down, that's how I felt. So, you know, all of a sudden, that kind of went from a point where I was, you know, just constantly comparing myself to everybody else. Um, it's like what I, what I saw in the mirror, I didn't like. I woke up every day, I'm like, what the fuck? Why am I so like tiny? Why can't I grow? Why can't I be like so-and-so? And, you know, these things just kept on manifesting. It's like I just could not be happy in my own skin. And I'm, I'm sure you guys can relate to that in some extent. And for some people, like, this probably sounds like, dude, get over it. But I just think it's important in context to know where everybody comes from. So I remember one day um, we, had, we had football practice at the end of uh, maybe after school. And generally in football, you're one thing. You're either the hammer or you're the nail. And fortunately, in this example coming up, I was the nail. So, um, you know, it was one of my other teammates covering a kickoff, and I was the last person standing behind my teammate who was returning the ball and the end zone. There was all kinds of open field. He could have gone anywhere and probably outrun me to a corner. He had a good angle. But he decided to change his mind and absolutely truck me, absolutely destroy me. And to me, it's like, you could have ran to the open field but I was the path of least resistance. And like to me, like that just made me feel like so small, so inconsequential. 
and just kind of you know manifested all these other things that were going through my head and just made me feel pathetic overall and man like I absolutely just got destroyed and physically like the pain wasn't that bad but like mentally it's like I could hear people laughing on the sidelines I could hear like jokes and taunts and all this stuff and really like I said it just confirmed everything I had thought about myself at that point I'm like fucking weak pathetic like who really cares about you? Inconsequential, you don't really matter. So, you know, kind of as it went on, I kind of picked myself up off the turf and, you know, dragged my ass off the field with the same exuberance as like a wet napkin stuck on the table. Wasn't going very fast, head down, poor posture, all this stuff, right? You can probably picture it in your head right now. Anyway, as I was going off the field, one of my coaches, you know, just kind of grabbed me by the side, kind of saw what happened and all this stuff, and, um, he made a challenge and he was his was like hey after you take off your pants come up to the gym and for me it's like this is the last place I want to be like I just got trucked by somebody who lives in the gym and there's a good chance a lot of my teammates who were just giving me shit are probably up there right now getting after it like do I really want to go confront them like no I just wanted to go in a corner and you know curl up and go to bed for a couple of days that's pretty much how I felt at the time but Honestly, it's like, it, I just felt like everything I was going to do, like, why would I go up to the gym? Like, everything I did in there wasn't working already. Like, I wasn't getting stronger. I wasn't getting bigger. I wasn't feeling more confident. I wasn't getting more athletic. So I would just be wasting my time. And like I said, I'm sure some of you guys watching right now have felt that same thing when, you're, when you've been training. It's like, this doesn't work. Why should I even bother? You know, if, if, if that resonates with you, just hit that like button right there and just kind of let me know that you're there. But anyway, something just kind of triggered me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the gym, and instead of kind of the usual football workouts and everything that we had been doing at the time, which, quite honestly, just didn't seem like they were working for me at the time, um, he introduced me to some Olympic lifts. Like, I hadn't really done them before, uh, but all of a sudden, you know, instead of doing our regular squats and all these things that we'd been doing, follow, I, I think it was like a BFS program, everything was like 5x5 five five and 5x3, five uh, my coach started working with me on some Olympic lifts, so like cleans and snatches and all this stuff, and just introduced the first day. Um, you know, honestly, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I'm like, you know what? This is different. It seems kind of fun. You know, let's continue going, going with it. And from that point on, it was like the next day after practice, I just went back again. And the next day I went back again. And the next day I went back again. And it was as if like that, like that pain, that discomfort that I had with myself and my own skin and just not feeling confident with who I was and, um, the direction I was going that, like the gym became that place of therapy is iron therapy is more or less the term right and you know all of a sudden you know nature caught up right I hit puberty and all that stuff and um, I just kind of used that pain I felt like I, I was slighted and I just used that to continually go in the gym from that point on I do not think I missed a workout um, you know f until now honestly like I, I do I just do not miss workouts because I still have this deep-seated fear that you know, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe that's it. And my only way to conquer that fear is to do something in that direction every single day. And it's more or less still kind of like a little demon sitting on my shoulder that I want to smack and, and just get over. But, you know, as the story kind of went, you know, I started seeing results. You know, naturally, uh, my body started to grow. I went from being five foot two or five foot three, whatever the hell it was, 103 pounds. I wish I had the program because that was actually what it said. So I was probably smaller. Um, to the next year, I was probably about five foot five, five foot six, about 150, so a pretty big growth spurt. And I was getting stronger. You know, I was one of the stronger guys on our team relative to body size. But when you're buck 50, uh, you don't really have to be that strong to be relatively strong. Um, so the next year, I was probably about five nine, 160, and then when I graduated high school, I was about five nine, 165, or 170. But um, honestly, as that kind of went, I still felt like there was always this doubt. You know, once you kind of, if you've played sports, you can relate. Kind of once, like, a coach or somebody has a preconceived notion about you, like, you're not good enough when you're 13, you're not going to be good enough when you're 17, that continues to build and continues to manifest. So it, it was almost like something, like, I had to work twice as hard to get any respect from my coaches. And I remember at one point, uh, one of my coaches said, I think this is before my senior year, said, like, I'm like, like, hey, can I, like, do this? Or can I maybe get some snaps on offense to do this? And he just flat out told me, like, you're not a good enough athlete. He's like, you're not as good an athlete as so-and-so. And, like, to me, I'm like, 
do you see what's going on or like our testing and all this stuff and like that was just like another slight for me that just kind of added the fuel to the fire and thinking back to when I was that teeny little you know five foot two 103 pound inconsequential kid that was the absolute nail in practice just getting boom just getting destroyed on the regular so basically what happened is you like I, I just continued to use any of these little thoughts is fuel. Like, how can I get better? You know, how can I build my body? Because I knew building my body was the key to building my mind and building my confidence, which in turn, you know, would just be a vehicle for me to be a happier person. So, you know, I continued to train, and I got up to a point where in high school, before I left high school, my senior year, um, I, I think I set our, our high school 100 meter record. Um, and then I was, you know, getting some good looks for football, and then um, unfortunately, I tore a hamstring twice in five months, something like that, and that was that. But Honestly, it's like thinking back to why I got into training and why all this stuff matters so much and why I'm putting content out on the regulars because I had this deep-seated fear and this deep-seated, you know, thought that I'm not good enough. You know, it's like I was a small kid, I was a weak kid, like there's nothing I can do to change that unless I work that much harder than anybody else. And what I think this means, you know, just for you or anybody else that's watching, it's it doesn't matter where you are right now. Like you can do something about it. Like genetics or any other thoughts, like be damned, like forget that shit. The most important thing that you can do is just take action and be the change that you wanna see within yourself. Like take action, just start something small each day and, and, and you know, take action where, where you wanna go. Cause it's not gonna happen easily. And if you let the world just continue to beat you down, that's where you're gonna stay. Um, like I said, overall, my point's not to be like, rah, 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 look at like my transformation or any of this stuff, but when you put your mind to something and decide to go all in towards it, like there's really not a limit on what you can do. You know, at the end of the day, you just have to say, fuck the excuses and like, let's make shit happen. But um, yeah, guys, I mean, honestly, that's really about it. Um, it's always really awkward to talk about this stuff. I'm, I'm not a big rah, rah, rah coach or a big like mindset, like listen to my story, stuff like that, but um, everybody, you definitely have the power to overcome, you know, whatever is holding you back. Um, so really at the end of the day, guys, like if you found this helpful, if you found this expiring, anything like that, please just uh, give me a like and share it with somebody else who might benefit. Um, but honestly, like action beats intention. Like you, these things are not going to change unless you take action to do so. And I really hope this inspires you to, um, you know, take a better step forward. So. That's about it. Um, I am going to drink some coffee. Well, actually, I've got tea. I'm dialing back into coffee because I drink like five cups of coffee and then can't go to bed. Imagine that. Um, but guys, yeah, that's really about it. Um, I guess until next time, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I will make sure I get to those as soon as I can. But I will be back again tomorrow with another video. Uh, I have yet to determine what time, but I will make sure I post it here on Bach Performance, and we will talk soon. Thanks a lot, guys, and have a good day.